week 10 of the fantasy football season. Here's a few running backs. I looked it off the wire this week. The first running back, Ray Davis of the Buffalo Bills. Ray Davis, he's looked great this season in his rookie year. And he had a big ball game in week nine versus the Miami Dolphins where it was limited touches, but he did have a 63-yard touchdown where he cut a couple defenders up and took it to the house. So Ray Davis, in my opinion, one of the best handcuff backs in all pro football and fantasy football. And this week, once again, it's a list with just pretty much handcuff backs. No injuries or no one's really emerged week here. So the last few games for Davis, week six of the Jets filling in for Cook, 20 carries, 97 yards, three catches, 55 yards. Week seven versus Tennessee in that ball game, five carries, 41 yards, a touchdown, a catch, six yards. Week 8 at Seattle, 6 carries, 29 yards. And Week 9 versus Miami, 4 carries, 20 yards, 2 catches, 70 yards, and the touchdown. So Week 10, a pretty good matchup in Indianapolis. And like I said, Ray Davis, if James Cook went down with injury, he could be a top 15, 20 option weekly for this Buffalo Bill team. And we've seen on limited touches, he's made most of his opportunities. So right now with Ray Davis out there in tons of fantasy leagues at 79%, he's definitely a running back. I would stash off the wire this week, the next running back, or Algier of the Atlanta Falcons. Tyler Algier, he's been a serviceable backup, getting touches, even though B. John Robinson's been great over the last few weeks. So Algier last week found the end zone versus the Dallas Cowboys when it was still a ball game and pretty close early on. Six carries, 18 yards of rush touchdown. And like I said, this week, it's about the handcuffs and maybe some of these guys will emerge or an injury will happen. So like I said, Al G has been one of the better handcuff backs in all pro football over the last few seasons. And if he was on, let's say, 15, 20 teams, he would be a starter, in my opinion, is Tyler Al because he's got that talent. We saw in his rookie season, he rushed for a thousand yards. And right now, if you're the Bijan Omer and need the handcuff, or you just want to catch Diamond in the rough, possibly. Al G is out there in 61% of fantasy leagues. Next running back, Samir White of the Vegas Raiders. No, he's the more physical back is Amir White. And I know they're going on bye week in week 10 is this Vegas Raider team. But Amir White's the short yardage and goal line back. And he outperformed Madison in that game. Six carries, 10 yards, and a touchdown. So I know it's not much, obviously. And I know Madison, he's been the leader in that backfield over the last few weeks. But he had nine carries, 36 yards. So it was a ball game where he was out of hand early and often between the Cincinnati Bengals, obviously, and the Vegas Raiders. But Alexander Madison, he hasn't taken. So Zamir White found the end zone in that one. Like I said, he's going to be the short yardage back. And this still could be possibly a 50-50 split between these two running backs. I don't think it'll be a big pickup off the wire this week. But like I said, obviously, he found the end zone. And pretty much it was a 50-50 split. So anytime you see a running back get some opportunities, you go out there and you get him on your roster and maybe you catch lightning in a bottle. He's available right now, White, in 72% of fantasy league. Next running back, Justice Hill of the Baltimore Ravens. So we know Hill, he's locked in in that third down role and passing downs role for this Baltimore Raven team where Derrick Henry's barely caught any passes this season for this Baltimore Raven team. And Justice Hill, we know he's got good speed. We know he's a decent receiver out of the backfield. And some games he'll have good games, and some games he won't do much, but he's a handcuff. And like I said, a third down back, I think he should be on both team leagues a deeper. Available in 80% of fantasy leagues. Week 7 in Tampa Bay, 5 carries, 4 yards, 3 catches, 44 yards, a touchdown. Week 8 at Cleveland, 2 carries, 5 yards, a catch, 14 yards. And week 9 versus Denver, 5 carries, 15 yards, 3 catches, 43 yards. So Hill, yards per catch. He's been solid all season long in that category for this Baltimore Raven team. He could run in between the tackles at times. But like I said, on the outside and on screens is where he's going to make his plays is Justice Hill. So if you need a running back in deep leagues, I think Hill, Hill could be helping fantasy owners. And he's a good handcuff available in 80% of fantasy leagues. And the final running back, I looked here with the Warriors, Ari Di Mercido the Arizona Cardinals. So many people think Trey Benson's the backup, but to be honest, Di Marcito for the most part outplayed Trey Benson as the backup running back for this Arizona Cardinal team some weeks. So week nine was a good game for him in limited touches, four carries, 59 yards, a touchdown, two catches, 21 yards. And week 10, a tough matchup versus the New York Jets. But like I said, this point of the season, there's not many running backs emerging and you just got to try to get a guy off the waiver wire as a handcuff if you got an open bench spot and see if they can help fantasy owners. So right now, Di Mercito out there in 100% of fantasy leagues, coming off a nice game versus Chicago Bears and going back to week six, 
had a nice game as well. And he's a good receiving back out of the backfield with Kyle Murray and this offense. They've been trying to find new ways to get guys open and make plays right now first in the NFC West. So Di Marcito, like I said, he's out there 99%. Of fantasy leagues and if you want to take a deep league flyer he's a running back to add this week so that's a few running backs i looked at off the waiver wire for week 10 of the fantasy football season